Hey everyone, welcome to the Fireside Chat number 28 on Crushing Classical, Redefining a Thriving Classical Music Career. I'm Tracy Friedlander and today we talk about creativity. What is creativity really? We dive into what it means and what it can look like as a musician. So often musicians define creativity as this huge unknown thing that everyone wants and everyone thinks it's the problem. I always thought so, but it's actually not the problem. We go into what creativity is the actual meaning of the word, and how it can actually look in practice as a musician. And I'll tell you, a surprising little challenge for anyone thinking about taking an audition came out of this conversation, and I can't wait to hear what you think of it. Before we begin, just a few quick things. Please join the conversation at facebook.com slash crushing classical, as well as crushing classical on Instagram. If you love our content, it would mean the world to us for you to comment and share it with your classical musician friends and colleagues. Let's get started. Hey, Eileen, how are you? Hey, good. How are you? Good. So we are just coming off of a seven-day challenge, the Crushing Classical seven-day starting line challenge. Mm -hmm. It just ended. And our and our 100 day challenge ended yesterday. Well, ended yesterday Yesterday. was the last day. Yep. So challenge is complete. Yeah, thank God. (laughs) I know it's funny. We we finished basically two challenges at the same time almost. One day apart. Yeah. And that was crazy to do a seven day while, while we were at the end of our hundred days. Cause it was cool to have a new, um, it made it intense actually. Yeah. It, it made the last week I was, I was going to wiffle ball my way through this last seven days and there was no wiffle balling. Yeah. There was no wiffle balling. I was beat by the end of each day. I was too. <laughs> Completely beat. I was too, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. yeah. So we just came off of it. It was good. Yeah, and you're gonna have your pumpkin spice latte today. I am definitely okay. Well, I'm gonna to go to Escazoo and get a drinking chocolate with espresso after we're done recording. Are you really? That's my plan. Oh. Yeah, that's my plan. Wow. They have the best chocolate, and then on top of it, to throw caffeine in it. I mean, yeah. more caffeine. Yes. Right, more Maybe. caffeine, right? Because chocolate already has some. Yeah, I know. Maybe I won't do the espresso because I I do want to sleep tonight actually. <laughs> right. So so yeah so we so there was some good stuff. Um, some good work done on that seven day challenge. And, um, we were just talking about what, what we could, you know, talk about one of the, one, kind of one of the themes that, that lots of people were talking about was creativity and how to, how to be creative, how to tap into creativity, that sort of thing. That's really, that came up several times during, yeah, during the seven days it did. Yeah. And I totally related to that because you always I always feel like, gee, I really, I want to be more creative. I want to have more of a creative um, impact on what I'm doing. What does that mean though? What does that, I want to have more of a creative impact on what I'm doing. What does that mean? Well, for me as an orchestral musician, like I have zero, besides what I do on on my own horn, like musically, Mm -hmm. there's no, um, my ideas as far as like the actual event that's not in included in the, in the planning. Like I, I could never say, Hey, I mean, I couldn't within a work environment, I couldn't say, Hey, let's do a wine tasting before this concert. It would be fun. So so creativity to you looks like what the event is. One way. Yeah. One way. Um, another way would be, um, you want specifics, like what I think would be cool and creative. Well, well, here's the thing. What the reason why I'm asking you that question is because creativity, if you line 20 people up against a wall and asked them what is creativity, you would get 20 different answers. Yeah, that's very true. So what it is to you is not what it is. You know what I'm saying? So it's something to you and it's something to every person differently. Yeah. So if I, like, I think if if I had to define creativity, I would define it like something unusual, unique, never been done before. um, Or, you know, unique to something that I thought of that, um, yeah, okay. just kind of like a unique. So what I'm going to do right now, because I'm a nerd, is I'm going to look up creativity in my handy dictionary right here. Hold on. Okay. Creativity. What's really, what's funny is that people can't believe I have a dictionary most of the time. The quality well, of the being internet. creative. Okay, what's creative? One second. Let me scroll up. Um, marked by creative. Marked by the ability or power to create. Given to creating. Having the quality of something created rather than imitated. Okay. So creativity is the opposite of imitation, mm-hmm. according to the dictionary. 
Right. Okay. So that's what, so maybe that's what people mean by they want to do something creative or have creativity. They don't want to imitate. They want to create. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that, you know, what's funny as you read that, I think, well, gee, we, we put all this um, added like baggage onto the creativity meaning ourselves. Yeah. Yep. Like that, that definition is just like the act of creating, you know, the act of creating and not <laughs> imitating versus imitating. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, we're, but, but I think musicians put so much pressure on, on ourselves, what creativity actually means. Like, Oh, it means you have to be like this gem, this diamond, New this and like, different, like, right. Stand yeah. out above everybody else. Compare. There's a comparison aspect to it. Probably. I think um I think people would take a lot of pressure off themselves if they actually looked up the words that they think they know in the dictionary. Yeah. I'm just saying. I mean, that's, that's what I do. Point. I do it all the time. That's why I have this dictionary here. I actually spent really good money on this dictionary. Really? It's a physical dictionary. Yeah, it's sitting right here on my I use it all the time. It's always sitting on the left of my desk all the time. And I look up words all the time because I realize that I make things bigger than they are if I don't look. Mm. And I don't want to do that. Life is hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to make it any bigger. So, yeah. So we talked about creativity. And one of the questions um, I think is good to ask is where does creativity come from? Yeah. Where does it come from? And so I want to know what your answer is. Um, you know, I thought about this um, and I, it's, it kind of, I ended up buying a, books about creativity actually a while back when I was really struggling with what's next for me on my career. And you know, really? I actually, I didn't know that. Yeah. I bought, um, I bought this, there's, a, there's one by, um, there's, it's like this guy who's like really into kind of the homeschooling movement. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't remember these people's names. We don't and then there's the, a, don't need the names, but what's it about? Um, well, I didn't read it. <laughs> oh, it was one of those things where okay. I was like, oh, let I me was, ask, well, let me ask you a question. What had you buy that book? In other words, what drove you to buy that book? I wanted to be creative, but about also what? I didn't have a lot of time. I don't know. Think I just wanted, what? I wanted to find out what that meant for me, I guess. I wanted I, to find it. It's interesting though, that you decided to buy a book from somebody who specializes in homeschooling for creativity. No, that's not really what he specializes in. He, okay. he specializes, okay. it's, he doesn't actually, actually homeschool himself his kids, but he, he speaks to just looking at education in a different way. And so part of that, part of that conversation involves creativity. Okay. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Okay. I was just a little confused. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But I found him, I guess the reason I brought up the homeschooling is because I found him through that route, you know? Okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's good. Okay. So you didn't read the book, which I find funny. Yeah, because when I was buying these things, I was also like really overwhelmed because I had a young baby and. Oh, so it know. was a while ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It was a while ago. Okay, I wasn't sure what what year you did it. I thought maybe it was last year, year before. No, it was a few years ago, and I was you know I was confused about where what's going on next with my career, and I just had a baby, and mm -hmm. I didn't know what any I didn't know you know. I bet a lot of people go through that. Oh yeah. But you know, like new moms. Yeah. Reassessing your life, you know, that sort of thing. I bet that yes. happens a lot. Yeah. I bought a lot of books at that time. Yeah. I bet that happens uh -huh. a lot. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, and of course, you know, in between baby feedings, you're sleeping or reading maybe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is I mean, that's my guess. I wouldn't know. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what I did. Yeah. 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 I get that. Okay. So yeah. So creativity. So um, I, I'm going to say, it's funny because what I notice is when people want to be creative, that's one of the first things they do is they go find a book to try and get an answer mm -hmm. um, instead of going inside and saying, what do I know about what's next for me? Or yeah. what do I know about what I want to do next or what I'm interested in even? And for me, it was what, what I knew was what I didn't want, not, but not so much what that's I did okay, want. That's okay though. You know, that's, okay. that's a good starting point. What I don't want is a good starting point. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I started there as well last year. You probably know that. Remember? Yeah. That was, yeah. That's where I said, I just knew what I didn't want. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I, I mean, I had an idea of what I wanted, but I had I was very clear what I didn't want. 
Yeah. So yeah, I think that's a good place to start. I almost think listing out what you don't want is it's a, it's at least a starting point. You got to start somewhere. Exactly. So, um, so, and, and that comes from what, you know, you definitely know what you don't want in that case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't necessarily know what you want. And then, you know, maybe you move on from there. You know, what, what I'm really saying is yes, you can read books and where you're going to find, uh, you know, it could be a unique career or a side hustle or a summer gig or whatever it is you want to do is not necessarily going to be found in a book. It's going to be found in you. Mm -hmm. That's where creativity really is. Exactly. So, and I think everyone's, like I said, everyone's definition of creativity is different. I, th you know what I think too, I think, um, I'm going to sort of piggyback on what you said earlier. A lot of musicians are obsessed with how do I stand out? Yeah. So it's almost, it's not even so much about creativity. What they really mean that they're not saying is how do I create to the point that I am a standout instead of invisible? Oh my God. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. There's some aspect of that. Yeah. So do you know how to solve that problem? Um, no, I mean, I'm working on that right now. I mean, with crushing classical, you know, you kind of are, but you know, what's interesting. So here's, what's funny. Do you know what the really, if you, if you just look, do you know what the real way to stand out is? No. To just show up. To stop being invisible. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? To show up. To, to actually become visible. Like physically? Like in front of somebody or? Well, for example, if you have a... A lot of people complain about or concerned about or whatever being invisible they because everybody's like so people say I want to stand out right mm -hmm. but the people who say that it's really funny most often what I find is the people who say that aren't even showing up so they're um you know we've had hot seats with people like this mm -hmm. so they have some idea or whatever whatever and and but nobody knows who they are because they're sort of doing the squirrel thing, you know the chipmunk thing where you go out and you get some nuts and you put them in your jaw, you know, you put them in your jowls and yeah. you take them back to your nest and you bury them and you play with them and you eat some of them. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? Like a chipmunk. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what's really funny, and, and you do that at night when nobody can see you or whatever. Right. But, and, and of course I'm, I'm making an analogy here, but it's funny because everyone's concerned about standing out, but they're not, they're completely invisible right now. So they want to go from invisible to standing out. It doesn't actually work that way. You have to go from invisible to visible to standing out. Okay. Do you get where I'm going with that? Do you get it? Yeah. You just have to start. You have to start. Yeah. You have to start. And by the way, that is the best way to be creative is just starting. So you think that people try to skip the middle one and they go, they want to go from invisible to standing out and being and the the the, the golden ticket to that or the golden I don't, key I don't, is, think, I don't just think it I know it go look in the world right right how many yeah, people have you and I spoken with on hot seats that are exactly this yeah how many people have you and I come across in our messaging like the messages that we get from people how how often is it that you know they're it's so funny like uh, you know, people talk about overnight success, you know, there is no such thing, but everybody thinks there is one. So, you know, people go, Oh my gosh, you know, this guy came on the scene. He's an overnight success. Actually, no, he was working at that for 10 years before you knew who he was. And then suddenly he became visible somehow, like something happened and he became visible to you, but he was visible to a whole lot of people before he was visible to you. Right. That's true of everybody. You know? Uh, yeah. Justin Timberlake, for example, is a really good example. That guy was working his ass off before he became who he is today. Um, you may not have seen him on the Mickey Mouse Club. You know, <clears> you <throat> may not have seen him on Star Search, 
you know, you may right. not have seen him. You know what I'm saying? Star like, Search for real? I think it was on Star Search. Yeah. Um, and by the way, I could be wrong about that, but the details are not important. I'm just making a point. Um, yeah. I, I can't. I, th- I think he was on Star Search, though. I'm pretty sure. I, I saw a documentary about his life. Um, I think I. Oh wait, you know what? It was a. It was an Oprah thing. It was like. Um, Mas- no, not masterclass. Yeah, maybe it was masterclass. And and he was on there. There was an episode, and it was a great episode. And he, I want to watch that. I'm not kidding. I love yeah, Justin no. Timberlake. And, and he and he gets on there, and he talks about his life. He talks about you know what happened, and he um, auditioned for the Mickey Mouse Club, and the whole thing that happened with him and his mom. And he's from Memphis, you know, and the whole thing. And it was, but he, but there was a whole. That's what's cool about the show is that. You find out what happened. But my point is that Justin Timberlake was not an overnight success. There was all this stuff that he did and he was visible at certain, you know, at certain times to certain people. Some people watched his career all the way through. Some people only saw him when when he became, you know, a part of the, what was his band called again? NSYNC? Was it NSYNC? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, NSYNC. Some people didn't see him until NSYNC, but he was working way before that. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? So yeah. what I what I see most often is people are like, uh, you know, creativity is going to make me all of a sudden stand out and then I'm going to have this amazing career. It doesn't work like that. You first you become visible and you create along the way and then you become more visible and more visible and vo- until all of a sudden people know who you are. Mm-hmm. I just think people have this completely backwards. People are trying to go from obscurity to standing out and it doesn't work that way. There is a right. process. Right. That's like going from making, you know, $500 a month to a million dollars a month. It doesn't work like that. Right. You know, so that's what I, you know, when, and so when I think of creativity with classical musicians, that's what I think about is I know what the drive is for creativity. It's not for creativity's sake. It's, I want to get some work out there. I want to be known. I want to stand out, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's their unwillingness to be creative publicly and get it wrong that actually right. isn't working. Because there's a whole lot of getting it wrong before you get it right. Right. The problem is they're not willing to do that publicly. They actually think creativity, I think, in most cases, I mean, I'm looking at all the message, messages that we've gotten in the conversations we've had. Um, they think creativity is their problem. Actually, no. Creativity publicly is their problem. Mm-hmm. being creative publicly. So I know, which is, a, which is opposite of classical musicians kind of thought process, which is I got to perfect it inside the practice room and then, and then emerge. Yes. You know, and, and, that's, that perfect... that's what, and that's how they're relating to social media right now. That's how they're relating to, you know, doing like say a, a Facebook presence, a Facebook page, a Facebook, you know, business page. That's how Mm -hmm. they're, you know, I have to perfect it before I go out in the world because their view is if I go out in the world, it has to be perfect. And also I want to stand out. Right. And it just doesn't work that way. And you know what? We can speak to this because for the longest time, again, we just finished our hundred day challenge. And for the longest time, we were essentially invisible to our own market. Mm -hmm. Some people knew who we were. Um, we, we, we had like about, I don't know, 300, we were, we were in the 300 ish number of followers. We've doubled that now, but we were in the 300 ish range of followers and only a portion of those were listening to our podcast. Right. You know, we are emerging and it's a process. It is. It's a long process. And Mm -hmm. we have to create along the way. We are creating along the way. In fact, firesides were a creation. Totally. Hot seats were a creation. Do you remember the day that I came to you and said, you know what we should do? We should do some hot seats. Yeah. I remember bringing that up to you. I can't remember when we decided that. Was that, I don't know, October, November, something last year? I can't remember. It It was definitely not October because October was when the, when the interviews started. And I don't think we started, um, firesides until like maybe february yeah february and hot seats were before that or after that after that okay after yeah at the same time or after yeah it was was actually they were close they were close to each other and so but that was all creative that was all creation the whole thing the whole thing was a creation um the seven day challenge we just did was a creation yeah and it was creativity or creation 
between a converse, uh, the conversation had to happen in order for that stuff to happen. Yeah. I mean, all, everything that we've done has been, we talked about it and Hey, I've got an idea, you know, yeah, That's everything. And so it's, it's funny because, and we've had to do it publicly. Imagine if we would have done all these things and just had all these ideas and we didn't do anything with them. We just, we didn't do like when we first started fire signs, we had no idea what we were doing. You should go back and listen to one of those. Um, <laughs> and by the way, it's really funny because I don't, I'm not even saying we know what we're doing now. Right. Because we don't, I mean, we do on a level, but you know, and we have an intention, we have a direction and all of that, but you know, do we actually know, uh, you know, day to day exactly what we're doing? No, absolutely not. And, but imagine if we had all these ideas, oh, you know, we should do interview, we should do a podcast and with interviews and, oh, you know what, we could do another series called Fireside Chats and, oh, we could do another series called Hot Seats. But what if we never launched any of that stuff? Right. You know, I remember the first time we did a hot seat, I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. We should do this again because I've done them. You know, I've done them for a long time in business. Right. And so, um, but, but imagine if we had all these ideas and all we did was, you know, store them in our jowls like a chipmunk and take them back to the nest and just, you know. Right. But you know what I'm thinking it? about? Like, I'm thinking about like all these things that we started and we actually launched and did, and now yep. they're, now they exist. But like, um, what I really wanted to do was wait and learn before I learn how to, before I, I launch anything, learn how to podcast. Yep. And so I was Googling and reading everything. And every time, every single Google search would come up with a different way to podcast. And I was getting more and more confused. Mm -hmm. And that was when I just was like, I'm just going to pick one and do it. But, um, but my point is, well, that, that was part of the point. And the other point is that, um, part of the problem, I think when people decide that they want to be, they want to have more creativity, they want to, they want to step out and do something different is the comparison and the looking around at what other people are doing and, and you see them and you don't know how long they've been doing it or the amount of work they've put into it. Mm -hmm. And you go, Oh, but that exists. So that's, so my idea isn't as good because that's already there. And, and so I might as well not do it. You yeah. know, it's really funny how easy it is to um, choose to invalidate your ideas and what you want to do Yeah, with everybody else's, I don't know, ideas, success, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's really, you know, and, and, and that's a battle that everybody, I don't think anyone is immune to that battle. Yeah, I don't either. And, I, and I'll be honest, I don't have any solution for it. I don't. The only solution is you have to do it and it will sort itself out. I think, you know, there's a really large aspect of this that is faith. Uh huh. You have to believe in yourself before anyone else believes in you. I mean, really, you have to. Uh, I know that sounds real woo woo. I actually mean you have to. Um, you have to know that you are doing the right work, the right work for you, the right. You have to just know that because no, because the validation from the outside you're probably not going to get, especially when you're first starting out. Right. Especially when you're first starting out. Um, I don't think there's any antidote for that. Yeah. You know, I, I think the only antidote for it is you have to get up every day and do good work. Do work. Right. Instead of watching all the time. I mean, and I do think that watching, there's value in watching. I watch other people. I see what they're doing. I'm definitely informed by the marketplace, but I'm not stopped by it. There's a difference between those two things. You can be informed by it, but you can't be stopped by it. Yeah, totally. And as you create, you start to see how your thing is different from the other person's thing because it's you that's doing it. Yeah. So that's why the creating part is really important mm -hmm. and the doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you have to be okay with it. You might be on the wrong track for a little while. Right. And that's okay. Right away. Yeah. I mean... It's funny. I didn't know if we would still keep doing firesides when we first started. I had no idea if we would still be doing them now. Is this what? This is the 28th? 28th um, fireside? You know, I have to look. Hold on. We're I close to 30 you. now. We're close to 30. So that means yeah. we've been doing it for 30 weeks in a row, let's say, almost. 28. It's 28. Okay, so 28. So this is the 28th. So we've done these consistently for 28 weeks. Let's see. How long is that? That's over half a year. Right. Right? Yeah. 
It's a long time. Yeah, it is. Consistently every week for a year. Which, yeah. you know, and, and when we started, we couldn't have said that we were still going to be doing these. Right. This was a total. It was an experiment. Yeah, it was totally an experiment. Did not know. And I, honestly, I wasn't concerned about whether or not we'd still keep doing them. I just thought, let's just do it and see what happens. Right. And then the hot seats for, for a while, we didn't, you know, people weren't really um, coming mm -hmm. on them and volunteering. And then all of a sudden we got this big flood of people who wanted yeah, to do it. We did. Yeah. We got a bunch of people, which was cool. Yeah. It was cool to get a bunch of people on there. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know, you know, you have to, you know, you have to find your way around creativity, certainly. Mm -hmm. And, but I'm going to tell you that a big part of being creative is being public. That's my, the whole point of what I'm saying here is you, you being creative privately is not going to net you anything. It's not going to give you anything. It's not going to do anything for you. Right. You actually have to be creative publicly. That's where you're going to find, because you know what? I'll be honest, you know, I'll tell you why you have to, 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 do, to do it publicly, I think. And Tracy, you can say why, but I think the reason you have to do it publicly is because the, your audience will tell you what they love, what they don't love. They'll tell you and they'll, they'll sort of inform your process. Uh-huh. We've had a lot of people write in and say, oh my gosh, I love the firesides. Right. And exactly. Of course, and of course I sort of light up a little bit like, oh, well, that's good. I, you know, I'm glad that people like the firesides and you know, yeah. I, I actually didn't know that necessarily until people wrote in and said it. Yeah. And, um, and of course it's great to hear that. Like, you know, not from a validation standpoint, but just from a, oh, I'm glad they're really getting something out of it. Yeah. Because I don't know until somebody says, you know, until somebody writes in and tells us that they, they really enjoy it. We just keep doing it until people write in and say, this sucks. Stop <laughs> doing this. You know what I mean? That's why I right. think it's important to do it publicly because so much of your, of what you do is going to be informed by a reaction. And if you're not doing it publicly, you're not going to get, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to know if it's on point, not on point. Because we don't do things just for ourselves. We do things for others. It's a contribution. Exactly. You know, everybody wants to contribute. You know? Totally. That's why I think it's so important to do it publicly. Even if you don't know what you're doing. Right. Actually, right. especially if you don't know what you're doing. Because people will respond. Yeah. You know, people will respond. And that's the best part, because then you're not invisible anymore. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to get your own little audience. You're going to get your own little gaggle of supporters. And you know why I say that, too? Because I don't know if you realize it. Most people are never going to do that. They're never going to become public. They're never going to lead a, any kind of business or conversation or, you know, project or anything. They're never going to do that. They're just going to watch you do it. They're going to spend their whole lives watching you do your work publicly. I don't know if you really realize that. That's where an audience comes from. It's a bunch of people who uh, likely, I mean, because the smallest number of people do it, are likely not going to publish anything and, and be public, but they're going to watch. They'll, they will gladly sit on the sidelines in the stands with popcorn and watch you. Right. They will gladly and, do that. And maybe wish that they were doing something like that. Like oh. musician, musician A decides to publicly start talking about, um, I don't know, let's use, let's use my husband for an example, mm -hmm. violins and bows and, and stuff like that. Just whatever. Yep. And then by vi violinist B goes, Oh gee, I kind of thought of, I would do that someday, but I don't know, maybe I'll start. And then they don't. And then they become the audience. Yep. There's probably somebody who wants to do what your husband wants to do. You know, talking about being, you know, nerding out on violins and bows. Yeah. And they will, you know, and I realize he hasn't started it yet, but there's a lot of people probably thinking about that and they just haven't done it. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Because there's more than one him in the world that's, that nerds out about violins and bows. They just do it quietly and privately right you know what i'm saying he's not the only yeah. person we know that yeah 
right? And so, yeah. But if he decides to do it and the other person that you're talking about decides to do it, it would probably be different because each person brings a different sort of point of view. Yeah. And there's enough audience to go around for everybody. Totally. There is. So There's plenty of people who watch, who listen to other classical music podcasts besides ours. Yeah. And believe me, um, I'm where I am now talking about this, but six months ago, you remember some phone calls we would have where I'd be like, oh my God, Eileen. Yeah. Totally. There's, I just found out that I didn't even know there was another classical music podcast that talks about alternative careers on it. Mm-hmm. Totally. Oh my God, we're toast. Yeah, Like yeah. I would go to worst case scenario. I yeah, would. She always went to we're toast. That was her, <laughs> she never said we're toast, but that, I mean, if, if I could put, if I could like snap a picture of Tracy six or eight months ago, and then, you know, there was a caption, it would be in quotes, we're toast. <laughs> Really? I would. I would see other musicians trying to break out into the scene of providing uh, information for musicians in some way, shape, or form, even if it wasn't what we were talking about. And I would go, oh, they're doing it. They're doing it too. Mm-hmm. Everyone's going to follow them and not us. I mean, and, like, it's and ridiculous. And, and it's so funny because that is such, it's amazing how, and you're totally human, but it's amazing how you will throw your ideas and everything that you want to do in the trash can over there. Someone else doing it too. Yeah. And I don't know where it stems from. I mean, it's probably partly humanity, but also like as a musician, you show up, there's a hundred people there. There's one job. Mm -hmm. 99 of you are going to go home. Mm -hmm. And and what's so funny is you guys assume that you're one of the 99. Yeah. At some point, it's so funny. You can either assume you're one of the 99 or you can decide you're going to be the one. Yeah. And it's choice, right? It's totally a decision that you make about yourself. Yeah. And by the way, that shows up in the work you do, how, you know, your discipline, how you prepare, it shows up in everything. Winning a job on day, you know, when there's a hundred people and they're only going to pick one and 99 are going home, you know, you won that job before you got there. Right. And you just, and people don't really get that. And that's the same thing with the marketplace, right? If you want to come into the marketplace, you're either an assumption you're going to lose or you decide you're going to win. Right. Which do you want to be? That's like playing the game. When did you, when did you decide you were winning? Yeah. When did you decide you were quitting or when did you decide you were winning? Right. Exactly. Same thing. You know, it is a game. It is a game now. and, And I realized that, People go, well, I don't want to spend five years playing a game. Why not? I mean, <laughs> what else are you going to do with your time? You can either spend your time wishing you did, or you can spend your time actually doing it. Right. It's the choice, for real. And by the way, this has everything to do with creativity. It has everything right. to do with creativity, because creativity is what ultimately propels you into a place where you actually are having an impact. You actually are visible. You actually are standing out eventually. Mm-hmm. It's all there. It's all part of it. Right. And we're, we're referring to games yeah. from a previous podcast. So I'll, you know, I can mark right. it in the you show. Know what notes we're talking about. Yeah. You should really, you should check out that podcast on, I think we talked about games, right? Yes, that, we did. And it's the, the conversation. Um, the title doesn't have the word games in it. So it I will. Do, right. Yeah, so, right. um, I did that on purpose because people were like, you know, people would be like, what is a game? What's she talking about? I think it's about, I, I think the word achievement is in it, like the science of achievement or something. Oh, might be is the that title. what it is? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can, you know what? I'll, I'll mention it in the show notes so okay. people can um, look it up. If you haven't heard that episode, you need to listen to it. It's yeah, that's a great, that's a great, pretty, actually, you know what? Uh, what? We got a review on our page about it. And I think it was that guy, Trevor. And oh, I yes. think it was 22. I think it was number 22. Yes. I think it was number 22 because he wrote. Because he listened to that and then he played a game and then he won an audition. Yep. Like right after it. And it, it's, and it was a great story. And he tells the story on the page. So you should go, go to the page and read it. It's in the, it's in the, um, the reviews. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was a great story. It was, it was a yeah. great story. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's, you know, that that's really the essence of, you know, talk about creativity, but there's so many, 
so much of creativity is being public and your willingness to be public. Totally. It's, and it it's hard. You know, what's weird. Isn't it weird that like classical musicians, we are public all day. I mean, on our, on the stage at concerts, we're public. We're, mm -hmm. but there's some kind of safety there. Like, cause you're in such a huge group. I mean, granted I'm sitting in the back, so it's a little safer for me and I'm in a, I'm in a section, but I, I'm still playing my own part unless I'm playing assistant, um, which, you know, I've talked about before, but like, um, you're there and you've got your people around you. So unless you're playing a solo, you're public, but you're still, you're still, you've got the safety net. You're, it's not the same as being like out there, like a soloist no, would be. No, no. And, it's not. and what we're talking about is like essentially being out there like a soloist. So that's why a lot of musicians who aren't soloists are worried about just starting, you know? But I think, I think soloists probably get that might get what we're talking about a little bit more because they, they just go out there and they do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess, um, I, I guess I think it's interesting because so much of an, a musician's life is auditioning. Yeah. And there's a lot of putting yourself out there when you do that. You know, if you decide you're going to, you know, every time you take a chair audition or you take a solo audition or you take whatever, you know, orchestral audition, whatever it is, uh -huh. um, every time you take a, any kind of an audition, you're putting yourself out there every time. And I realize that classic musicians are very hesitant to put their process out there. And what I think, I think, I, I think the biggest thing I want you to understand is, as you know, classical musicians, is that your process is more interesting to people than your final product. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you really understand that um, your creative process or how you got there, you know, how you got to the final day or whatever. Do, do, do you know if, if there was a musician who was willing to chronicle their preparation for an audition, do you know how widely watched that would be? Um, what do you mean though? Like just practice videos or like talking about what they're going through with it? I don't know, Tracy. What do I mean? Well, I think it would be what I think latter. is really funny is you think there's an answer to this, to this. And like, there's some way to do this, like some right way. That's, that was yeah, the question right. you just asked me. You're right. There's That's probably a, no, instead way. of actually creating it, you were looking for the right answer. Mm -hmm. I find interesting. Yeah. There I go again. Mm -hmm. It's just the knee jerk reaction. Yeah. The knee jerk. Well, what would I say? And what would I do? And how would I do it? And uh, how about if you just, Created along the way and wake up and just let it happen. How about if you wake up in the morning and say, well, today is day one of preparing for my audition and I'm scared shitless. And mm -hmm. so here's what I'm going to do. You know, I'm going to today, what I'm going to do to calm myself down so I can begin preparation. You know, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to get my music in order or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I'm just making this up. But what if you just lived in that day? And you let it come out of you, whatever that looks like. Yeah. That's called creativity. It's right. the concern for what it looks like that's stopping creativity. Mm hmm Do you know how, just, I want you to, I'm going to, so I'm going to ask you the question again, because you actually didn't answer it. Do you know how widely watched it would be if somebody decided to chronicle a preparation for an audition and said what audition they were taking? They actually said it. And then they, and then they put it on YouTube. They chronicled every single day that they prepared for that audition. Let's say it was, um, I don't know, six weeks of preparation. And they put up a video every day. That'd be awesome. I think a lot of people would watch it. I think a I, ton. I don't just think I know. And I don't care what instrument it is. I don't care if it's violin. I don't care if it's horn, trumpet. I don't care. It doesn't matter because what's interesting about it is I want to see what they're going through. Right. Because everybody can relate to that. But nobody's ever done it. Right. I mean, the answer that you know that you need to whether or not that would be interesting is reality TV. <laughs> exactly. That's all you we're know? ever doing. Watching. We're just watching people go through some, you know, what, what everybody thinks is mundane is actually not mundane. And by the way, you know, we, we had a hot seat recently with a guy and he's like, you know, he puts up practice videos. A lot of people put up practice videos. They don't want to see you practicing. They want to see your process. There is a difference between those two things. Mm -hmm. People don't want to see you practicing. 
They want to see your process. Right. There's I think that's why. Okay. So that's why I asked that question when you said, you know, you want to know how it looks. I, that's why I asked that because so many people do that. So many people put up practice videos and they don't, but they don't talk and they don't like tell you what's going on. Well, let me ask you a question. I mean, you have to put yourself in the shoes of the audience. Are you really interested in watching a practice video? No, no, I'm not, not either. I don't give a shit. I don't yeah. care. I could care less. How is me watching you practice going to make me better? See, that's the question people need to ask. Cause I, I don't like watching those videos. I don't care about them at all. It's just lame. Yeah. It's lame. And what am I going to do? Sit on the other side and judge your playing? Who cares if I judge your playing? I just wasted five minutes of my life if I did that. Yeah. Right? Because judging someone else's playing is not going to make you better. There's exactly. no improvement. There's no improvement found there. Sorry. You know? Mm -hmm. It's just not. So, but that's, but it's so funny because people are not, it's your process that they want to see. They don't want to see pictures of you with your instrument because no one cares. Seriously, nobody cares. They're going to, you know, heart it on Instagram. Hearts, oh, like, love. Yeah, they're going to heart it on Instagram, but they actually don't really care. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, nobody's no, going I, to say this, but I'm just they don't. Because yeah, I mean, nobody cares. And, and the same thing with your practice videos. There is so much more you can show people and you're just not. So you... Because you're not willing to show your process, instead it's just easier to show here's a practice video and here's a you know picture of me with my instrument, right? With filters. <laughs> it's pretty. It is pretty. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. I don't care. You know? Yeah. And the thing is, nobody cares. Um, right. You know, the first the first classical musician who's actually willing to show their process will be, in my, I mean, I can predict it, the most successful one. Mm -hmm. because times have changed. Look, Yo-Yo Ma did not have to show you his process when he was coming up. Different time. Different time. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to show that to you. Joshua Bell, the same thing. He didn't have to either. It wasn't necessary. He could just show up and play. Right. Nowadays, what everybody wants to see, and this is what social media is about, is your process. That's what they mm -hmm. want to see. Yeah. That's what they want to see. This is not rocket science, you know? This is... And it's a choice. You're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. Right. And I'm not going to convince you. You either know what I'm saying is true or you don't. I'm not going to try and convince you. There is, you can, um, you know, you can keep doing it the way you're doing it and hope it works out or you can try something new. Exactly. And that's really what we're here to do is suggest that. We're here to suggest that you try something you haven't done before, mm -hmm. you know, which is be public. Not an easy choice. So there you go. You're right. That's where I stand on creativity and what it means to be. And, and really, I just think creativity is about, there's such a public aspect of it. Yeah, there really is. Such a public aspect of it. So there you have it. I like that. I like that re kind of a new look at creativity, like what it really is mm -hmm. and what it means now in our world that we live in today. Mm -hmm. So, and I also think you have to, you know, I'm giving you what I see creativity is. I'm just having you look at another point of view and you have to look and see what you think it is. Right. You know, what is it for you? I promise you it's not private. Right. It's not private. It's informed by the world we're living in. Yes. And really, I swear to you, I really hope somebody listening to this decides to publicly document their journey from deciding to do an audition to showing up that day and doing it. Yeah, I would love, I would love someone to take that on. Hey, if anyone's listening to this right now and they want to do it, mm -hmm. message us. Yeah, I'd love to know. You know, maybe you could use the, you use the hashtag crushing classical. You could, you could use that. That's how we would find you for sure. Yeah. Um, you should, I mean, absolutely. It'd be so cool if somebody actually took it on. And by the way, nobody cares if you win or not. Right. That's, that's, that's so funny. Like nobody wants to talk about that. They're like, I'm going to take, I'm going to take, you know, and we had people do this in the seven day challenge too. They're like, 
I want to take X audition. Like they would talk about their, you know, whatever their ideas were, goals, whatever. And they, several people wrote, I want to take, and they write X, X audition. Like they wouldn't say what the audition was. Mm -hmm. And I think that's funny. Yeah, I really do. I think that's funny because I don't know. I was know. talking about this with somebody recently. We're, we're, back when I was still taking auditions, I wouldn't want to tell people because that made it like accountable. Like here I am. I'm going to, if nobody knows I went, then nobody knows. Nobody is going to know that I didn't win if I don't win. So you just decided ahead of time you weren't going to win then. That's basically what I know now that I did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So funny. Yeah. Because, you know, do you know how much harder you might have practiced if you would have known everybody knew you were taking it? Yeah. You would have had a completely different attitude about it, I think. I think so, too. You know? And also, mm -hmm. just because you didn't win an audition doesn't mean you failed. You're not a failure. Right. You know, you didn't win. And you can probably walk out of there and say why you didn't win. In fact, I, I argue that before you go in to take that audition, you already know. Yes. Every audition I've won, I knew I was going to win before I walked in. And I'm talking like when I was placing, like I knew if I was going to win that round, like I was doing solo stuff, right? I wasn't doing orchestral, but when I was mm -hmm. doing solo work, um, I knew if I was going to win the thing. Right. And every time I won it, I knew that I was going to win it before I walked in. Mm -hmm. And I knew when I wasn't. I knew. So, okay. Question for you. Did you know before, because you won the Virginia Symphony spot, did you know before you walked in that you were going to win? Um, no. Okay. I didn't. Did you care? Did I care if I won? Uh-huh. No. <laughs> okay, so there's an aspect of that, too. Yeah. You had zero See, attachments. That, you had zero I had no attachment. Yeah, that's that's a big that's a really big truth right there that I didn't care. That's so funny. For all the money you spent to go cross country and audition, you didn't care if you won. I think that's so interesting. Well, it was it was not to me it wasn't big stakes. I I wanted to win, but I it wasn't to me it wasn't like life or death. What, Right, because it wasn't going to be a huge like lifestyle cha um, change financially for me, so I felt like eh. it was about the money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was about the money. It was like about winning the job and getting for the money, right? The well, money. that was a big part of it. That was how yeah. I was going to make money. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. Except well, you didn't even know what the salary was either, which is even funnier about the whole thing, you know. Well, I think I knew roughly what the salary was. I didn't, I didn't know, understand math and like what I would have to do to take taxes out and what that meant and everything else. <laughs> Come on, don't laugh I love, at me. I just love the reality of all this. You know, I love, I love how people just don't look at the reality of things. It's hilarious. I was like, tw I was so young. I was like yeah, 25, you, were, yeah, I was you know, say, you were like mid twenties, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, you know, and I laugh at it because it's totally human. You know, I'm not laughing yeah. at you. I'm laughing at the humanity of it because it's funny. And, and so it's, it's just interesting though. Like, you know, so part of winning an audition can be like, I'm just saying, I knew when I walked in to those solo auditions, I knew if I was going to win or not. I knew. Part of, part of, but all I can tell you a big part of winning was not being attached to the outcome. There's a very big part of it. Exactly. And so I wasn't so attached to the outcome. Same with when I came to this job and I did really well and I almost won right. and I ended up moving here. I was. So there wasn't big stakes for that either, then, huh? Same well, thing. it. I. You know what? I. I really wanted to get a job, and I really wanted to win it. But at the same time, I. I don't know. There was some kind of. I had just gotten back from China, and so I was sort of attached to Chicago, and so coming here, was like, you know, it'd be great if I won it, but if I don't, I still get to live in Chicago. Oh, I so, see. Okay. You know, so I wasn't super attached to it. I wasn't like, my life's going to be, you know, but I can remember other times, like when I took bigger jobs, like I remember when I took the Boston Symphony job and I totally, I totally um, psyched myself out for it. Cause here I was like going from Chicago to Boston, another really large city. And I was like, this is a really awesome city. Look at this cool architecture. I love the vibe here. 
And then, you know, you go in and it's like this history and you go into the hall and it's so, and I knew that it, they paid really well. So I just was going like, I couldn't see myself going from like me, this person who was freelance and, and maybe making 20 grand a year to suddenly I was going to make like over a hundred thousand dollars. Like for me, that, that big giant gash gap was it was hard for me to, to envision, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. You know, I can see that. I and so I psyched that. myself out for it. I really did. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody's in different, a different place when they um, audition, but it would just be cool to see someone's process, honestly. Yeah, I know. And what would that do for your actual audition? If you were do, if you were documenting that? Yeah. I mean, it, it could do really great things, you know, even yeah. if you, even if you lose, uh, even if you don't win the spot. Right. You know, uh, you know, no biggie. So I really don't think that losing an audition or, you know, I, sh or I should say not winning an audition. I don't really think that's a big deal. I mean, it's a bummer, certainly, but yeah, it's not a character flaw. Right. I think that's why they don't people don't share is because they think it's some like it's some kind of character flaw. If you lose the audition, I don't know. I don't think that. And, yeah. and you know what's funny is I don't think anyone thinks that. You no. don't think that, right? If you find out if you found out someone took an audition and they didn't make it past the first round, you know, you're not Absolutely like not. Oh, you're a loser. Like you didn't. <laughs> you're not thinking. No, that. of course not. We've right? all been there. That's the funny thing. Yeah, I mean, I just I would never yeah. think that about somebody, and I don't right. think anybody would really. No. So that's what I think is so funny about classical musicians is they're like, what will everybody think? And the truth is everybody thinks what you think, which is, wow, that's too bad they didn't make the first, first, first round. Exactly. I know what that's like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's totally. It's so funny how, you know, we make it up in our minds what people are going to think. It's so silly. It's ridiculous. It's just silly. I know. It's true. So I don't know. I just, let me put it this way. If anybody decides to do this, to take on this little thing, you know, documenting all the way up to an audition, and I really do mean every day all the way up to. Um, you know, I don't think you realize how followed you would be. I don't yeah. think you realize it. Yeah. You know, you tell one person about it and that's going to just like, that's going to light a fire all over the place. Right. You know, oh my Do gosh, you, gotta watch this guy. you know, oh my gosh, you got to see this guy. He's preparing for an audition. Like, really? Right. I know. Oh, Wouldn't it be cool if you made a game out of it? Like yeah. the first, you're the first person who's publicly putting yourself all the way out there. What if you're practicing putting yourself all the way out there every single day for four weeks or six weeks or whatever yeah. it ends up being. Then when you actually put yourself out there on the stage, maybe it's not that scary anymore because you know that hundreds or thousands or, you know, who knows how many people, tens of thousands of people watched your process. And now you just have to play for nine people. You've been doing that the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, so you've, you've been, been playing, you know, no, you're playing for, you know, a hundred thousand people who are watching your YouTube channel. And now you're going to play for nine. That seems pretty easy to me. Yeah. Interesting. That seems like a cool, that seems like it would be a really cool experiment. Oh man. I think that'd be awesome. I know. Okay. I hope someone takes this on and me uses too. the, I hope somebody decides to do this. I know it's balls, but let me tell you, I think it, it is balls. balls. It is balls. I think it would be awesome if somebody decided to do this. Yeah. Do it and hashtag crushing classical. And I'll tell you what, I would totally do it if I was auditioning. Like, you know, I don't play anymore, but if I was playing still and I was doing our crest, I would totally take this on. You would. Oh yeah, absolutely. I would do it now. Hell now. yeah, I would do it. I would absolutely do it. No question. Now no that question. I know what I know about social media, I would do it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, after you've got that audience gathered, who knows what you could do with that after that? Yeah, right? I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't have to figure out what's going to happen after the audition. You're just, you're going yeah. into the audition. And then after the audition, you decide what you're going to do. Yeah, it makes the audition more of a process about you too, not just about them, the people that end up listening to you on the last day. Totally. It makes it about you and your process and it gives you power. Yeah. And by the way, a lot of people will get something out of your process. So if you're someone who is uh regularly uh, takes orchestral auditions and or you know it could be for an, an army band for all i care i don't care what you're auditioning for but you know people are going to get something out of your process like they're going to take something for themselves oh, totally gonna, you know what i'm saying I mean, i'm imagine... always looking for how to do things better i'm always yeah you know? yeah and i wouldn't say like that that you would want to make like your first practice session on youtube like one and a half hours long or whatever but like what no, i can no, no, what no, i no. envision i envision like 
the person who decides to wake up at 5.30, even though you usually sleep till 8.30, mm -hmm. to get your morning routine in and what that's like for you to get up that early every day. And let's see, make your coffee and tell us what you're going to do. And then we'll see the next video mm -hmm. the next and, day. You know, and, and, maybe, we'll see. and maybe you've got, you know, your phone on your stand and you're, you know, you, you take a, you know, 30 seconds of you warming up or something like, I'm just making this up. And, and then you talk about that, you know, you talk about, or, or you just finished a practice session and then you talk about what happened in that session. And, you know, even you talk about preparing your music and how you prepare your music for the, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm yeah. just telling you, like, it's just your process. You're just documenting your process. No, nobody wants to see your entire practice session. Nobody cares about that. Right. They just want to see your process. I'll tell you what, can I tell you something that this yeah. would have been an interesting and I, I just thought of this. So I have to share it. Um, when I was getting ready for the Virginia Symphony audition and like you asked me if I knew I was going to win, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I did not quit the game when I could have quit. Cause one thing that happened was, um, a friend of mine, I was playing for her and she was calling out the excerpts and she called out Prokofiev five and I did not have it in my music. And it was like the day before I was leaving for the audition and I didn't have it because the way they had listed the music, I just didn't, it was like Prokofiev, Romeo and Juliet, comma, Prokofiev five. And I was looking down the list and I didn't look far enough to the right. And I just didn't, I missed it on the list. And so I hadn't practiced it at all. Didn't even know it. And, um, but I didn't decide that I was going to lose because of that. I decided I got to get this piece and cram it and really learn it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And it actually, it was funny because one of the comments I got, they said, we really liked your Prokofiev five. And I was just laughing. Cause I was like, well, I practiced it for approximately three days. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's an example of a thing where, um, I could have decided that I lost right then. Mm -hmm. I could have been like, gee, I hope they don't ask that. Cause I, I did not prepare for it for two months. Um, mm -hmm. but I did. Mm -hmm. So, and that would have been an interesting thing to put in the documentation. Like what if I would have found that out? Three days before, what's my reaction yeah. going to be? Yeah, and everybody you know? would have ridden that roller coaster with you. Holy yeah. shit, she's not prepared. She's not prepared. <laughs> yeah, you no, know, everybody exactly. would have ridden that. And you know, that's what you have to get is it's the highs and the lows and the yeah, it's all the things in between that are interesting. It's the preparing. It's you know, the most exciting thing about taking an audition is what you did to get there. Right. Nobody really cares once you win. They they celebrate with nobody you, and cares. then and then that's yeah. like the end of the story. They, move and they close on. the end book. Of story. Move on. What's next? Yeah. You yeah. Know, they're on watching someone else, you know, <laughs> for real. <laughs> it's really how it it's is. It's true. It's so, true. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great idea. So anyway, we hope you take it on if you do. Hashtag crushing classical. Um, yeah. and definitely message us for heaven's sake. I mean, don't be a noob because we want to watch it too, by the way. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah we want to be absolutely. voyeurs in your life. So <laughs> yeah. You know, we want to put our goggles on and watch your life. So if you decide to do this, we'd love to, I would love to see this. It'd be so cool if somebody actually did this. Yes, it would. It'd be really great. And by the way, you should definitely do it. I mean, on a, on a Facebook page for certain, for sure, certainly on Instagram, but definitely, uh, YouTube, you should definitely get do a YouTube channel and you should put up your videos there. Yeah. Because then, and people then share can watch it to it. Facebook. Yeah. Cause they, people can, no, don't share it to Facebook. Uh, it should oh. be, you have to upload your videos native on Facebook or they don't show up in the feed. Oh, okay. You should never, ever, ever share a YouTube video on, never do that. Never do right. that. Right. Okay. I remember this. Yeah. You I remember that. that. Yeah. So you have to make the video from Facebook. You have to make the video. Or make it on your phone and then put it on, it on phone, Facebook. Upload it to yeah. Facebook, then upload it to YouTube. Never share a YouTube video on Facebook because they just won't show it. Right. It will not show up right. in the feed. Just understand that. Facebook is very picky now about um, you know, what content is native and what is not. And if you're not uploading to their platform, they have no interest in you. Right. So, and then Instagram can only be one minute. So you, you're kind of limited there, but that's okay. Cause you can just document what you're doing on there. Document what you're doing. And you can also, and you can do stories on there, which is why oh, yeah, the stories um, is awesome. You should use stories. And then also, um, you know, you can just edit your video and put a minute of video up on Instagram. Exactly. And say, Hey, watch the rest on YouTube or whatever. Right. Yeah. There's right. any number of ways to do it. Yeah. So anyway, I know we're getting into the technical stuff, but we're just, you know, just trying to help y'all out. Um, <laughs> right. So somebody yes. do this. Somebody do this. That's the command out of here. Somebody do yeah, this. Yeah. Do it. I can't wait to watch it. Cool. And by the way, um, fireside chat, I believe it's 22. 
Yes. I think it's number 22 is about games. So if you want to, this is a game, by the way, what we're putting out here is like a game. So go listen to that fireside chat. And then if you want to do this, send us a message because it'd be so cool for someone to do this. It sure would. We just made up a game for you. Yeah, it is. It's fireside 22. I'm looking it up. Science of achievement, the surprisingly simple formula behind extraordinary results. Yeah, You'll games. learn all about that in that episode. So totally. games. Yeah, games. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Eileen. This was a great one. And um, we'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening today. Hey, listen, I have a huge favor to ask you, and it will only take a few seconds. If you like this show, one way that you can let us know is by writing a review on iTunes and subscribing to the podcast. Writing a review will help other people to find the podcast and help us immensely. It will only take a few minutes. Just head over to iTunes and search for Crushing Classical. There, you can write a review and click subscribe. Thanks again.